and good evening AP Physics students. Today we're just going to do nothing not so big in physics, you know, just harness the power of the atom, talk about nuclear fission, talk about energy turning into mass back into energy and, you know, pretty much just, you know, describe the most powerful uh, reactions that have ever been, you know, made by all of humankind. You know, no big deal. Uh, so let's start out chapter 30, our one and only assignment from chapter 30, just with a little review of Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. Energy is mass, mass is energy, uh, one can get turned into the other, they're really the same side of the different coin, or same coin of the different, they're, they're one and the same, okay? Now, uh, when dealing uh, with the nucleus, okay, um, it's hard to talk about, okay, you're talking about the mass of a proton, right? Mass of a proton, 1.66 times 10 to the minus uh, 27th kilograms. Well, physicists don't like carrying around exponents, all right? That's why they invented things like prefixes, okay? So a lot of times when doing mass to energy conversions, it's convenient to think about mass and energy divided by c squared as being the same thing. Okay, for instance, you won't see too many nuclear physicists talking about AMUs. What they'll talk about is instead of talking about one AMU, the approximately the mass of one proton or one neutron, uh, they'll talk about uh, mega electron volts per divided by c squared. Okay, so uh, if I want to talk about mass, I'll talk about one AMU. If I want to talk about the energy contained in the mass of one AMU, I might say 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared, okay? Uh, you could derive this number uh, using just uh, things like the charge of an electron and uh, the mass of an AMU, okay? Uh, so let's talk about, uh, in your homework, uh, problems 9 and 11, okay? Uh, and to do those two problems, uh, you are going to have to know about binding energy, okay? What is binding energy? Binding energy is the energy that must be added to break up a nucleus into its constituent particles, okay? Um, and to calculate this, uh, you might want to look uh, in your book in Appendix B on page A12, okay? What Appendix B does is it lists to like six decimal places, and you'll want to use all six, because when you talk about uh, turning mass into energy, very rarely do you like take all of an atom and turn it to, into energy. As a matter of fact, never, unless you're talking about matter and antimatter. Um, but you might turn a millionth of the mass of an atom into um, energy. So as you do this, make sure you use six decimal places um, in your calculations. All right. Okay, so those are some hints on problems uh, 9 and 11. And now let's kind of move on here and give you some hints on uh, problems 23 and 25. Okay, um, so problems 23 and 25 talk about alpha decay. Okay. So let's just remind you uh, from back in your chemistry days uh, with Mr. Carafel what an alpha decay is. Let's say I've got you some uranium-238 and uh, it undergoes an alpha decay. When an atom uh, go undergoes an alpha decay and we call uh, the atom you start with, the parent nucleus, right, the thing you start with, uh, it breaks down into a daughter um, and the daughter has an atomic number that is two less and a mass number that is four less. Um, so you have your daughter nucleus, your alpha particle, which is really a helium nuclei, uh, and energy. And this energy is sometimes called disintegration energy. Uh, in your book, they represent this with Q. Okay. So, uh, parent, daughter, alpha, disintegration energy, uh, this is alpha decay. Uh, notice that the total number of the mass number, and the atomic number, and the mass number are both conserved. Um, so, for instance, um, this isn't right. Oh, my goodness. Let's add a 2 and a 3 there. 234 plus 4, right? 234 plus 4 is 238. Uh, 92 is 90 plus 2, okay? So uh, that is a general um, 
illustration of alpha decay. Okay. Uh, now, if we took that a step further, uh, remember that the mass or energy of each side must be equal by conservation of mass or conservation of energy. Uh, so, for instance, if I looked up the exact mass of the parent um, nuclei, right, in the appendix, all right, multiplied by that by c squared, that would equal the mass of the daughter nucleus times c squared plus the mouth of the mass of the alpha particle times c squared uh, plus the disintegration energy. Now, how is this energy um, um, given off? Usually, it turns into the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. Um, technically, the daughter nucleus would um, recoil some, um, but you'll see in your book that about 98 to 99 percent um, of the kinetic energy uh, goes into the alpha particle, and that's because the mass is so much smaller. Uh, again, you can kind of think of like firing a shotgun here. Yeah, the shotgun, recoiling shotgun has some kinetic energy, but about 99% of, of the kinetic energy uh, goes into the bullet, all right? So you can think of the alpha as kind of like the bullet, and the daughter here is like the, the shotgun. Um, okay, um, now, momentum's also conserved, uh, but that's a uh, topic um, for another day, okay? So, uh, there are some hints uh, on four of your problems uh, out of chapter 30. Uh, remember, think conservation of energy and uh, E equals MC squared. Uh, gosh, ladies and gentlemen, I wish I had a joke for you at the end, uh, but unfortunately I don't. But, oh, oh my gosh, what's that? What is that? Oh my gosh, a spider. Oh my gosh, a spider. Oh, oh my, did you guys see that? A spider just crawled uh, across the page here and over to my keyboard. Oh, but don't worry. Uh, it's all under control now. Ah, I get it. The spider is under control, like under the control key, the spider that crawled across, uh, the page. <laughs> uh, all right. Nice job, AP Physics students. We'll see you tomorrow.